Okay, so we're going to find the missing variables and the theorem or postulate that supported our work. Um, now in this one, uh, these are parallel lines. They ha do have some type of marking on them. It's not an arrow, but they're squares or rectangles. Um, and looking at my transversal, I have a pair of alternate uh, interior angles. So we are going to use the alternate interior angles theorem to help us solve for x. And the alternate interior angles theorem states that the two alternate interior angles, when we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, are equal or congruent. Solving for x, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I have a 16 is equal to a 2x minus a 10. Adding 10 to both sides. I have a 26 is equal to a 2x. And dividing by 2 on both sides, x comes out to be... 13. All right, moving on. These are a pair of same side interior angles. So we are going to use the same side interior angles theorem, which states that if we have a pair of same side interior angles uh, on two parallel lines, they are supplementary. So I'm going to add them together. and set them equal to 180. So I have, combining like terms, we have a 5x plus a 30 is equal to a 180. Subtracting 30 from both sides, I wind up with a 5x is equal to 150 and dividing by 5 on both sides x comes out to be 30. All right, looking at my next one, these are alternate exterior angles. So by the alternate exterior angles theorem, these are um, congruent, so we're going to set them equal to one another. So I'm first going to add 4 to both sides. I get an 8x is equal to a 164, and then Dividing by 8 on both sides, I get x is equal to a 20.5. Alright, my next one, I'm given that BD and AE are parallel lines. We're going to find both x and y um, and state the reasons. So, this 4x minus 5 and the 3x plus 11, those are corresponding angles. So by the corresponding angles postulate, we can set those equal to each other and solve for x. So let's do that right now. So you get x is 16. Now if I put 16 into the 4x minus 5, a 4 times a 16 minus a 5 gives me a 59 degree angle. And then this 59 degree angle and this 3y plus 1, those are a linear pair. So we're going to use the linear pair theorem. And that states that a linear pair um, are supplementary. 
So I'm going to set at a 59 degree angle equal, sorry, they're supplementary. I'm going to take that 59 degree angle and add it to 3y plus 1, and that will equal 180 degrees. A 59 plus a 1 is a 60. Subtracting 60 from both sides. I get a 3y is equal to a 120. And dividing by 3 on both sides, y comes out to be 40. All right. So, now, um, moving on to the next page. Um, for this one, I have K and M are parallel, uh, which it got cut off. That's K and M. Um, and so these are same side exterior angles. So what that would mean is that they are supplementary. So we are going to use the same side exterior angles theorem to solve for x. So I'm going to set the 3x squared minus 20x, add that to the 189 minus 8x, and set that equal to 180. Combining like terms on this side, I get a 3x squared minus a 28x plus a 189 is equal to a 180. And this is a quadratic formula, so I am going to um, subtract this 180 over to set it equal to 0. So I have a 3x squared minus a 28x plus a 9 is equal to 0. Using the x method to solve, and the top of your x is your a times your c. That 3x squared times a 9 is a 27x squared. And in the bottom of your x is your b, which in this case is negative 28x. Two numbers, when multiplied together, equal positive 27x squared, but when added together, equal negative 28x would be a negative 27x and a negative 1x. Rewriting this polynomial, this is what I get. Grouping my first two terms and my last two terms. Taking the GCF out of my first two terms, I would take out a 3x and I'd be left with an x minus a 9. I would need to take out a minus 1 out of my next two terms to be left with an x minus a 9. And we know that we did this correctly if my parentheses match. So, one of my binomials is a 3x minus a 1. My other binomial is an x minus a 9. If I set them both equal to 0, I would get x is a positive one-third, and x is a positive nine. If I put one-third back in to, let's say, this right here, a one-third squared is a one-ninth, so a three times a one-ninth is a one-third, and then minus a twenty-thirds, that's going to give me a negative uh, angle measurement. So x cannot be one third. But if I put 9 in for both of my x's, it does come out to work. So x is 9 for this one. All right. So the next couple of problems, we're going to be uh, dealing with auxiliary lines. An auxiliary line is something that can help aid in a proof or in 
uh, solving of a problem. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an auxiliary line that goes through angle one. It doesn't necessarily cut angle one in half, but we're making it so it's parallel to the other two lines. Um, this auxiliary line is going to help us draw or help us figure out the measure of angle one. And again, an auxiliary line is something that you draw in to help you solve a problem. All right, so looking at that auxiliary line with this parallel line and this transversal, this angle right here and this part of angle one are corresponding angles. So this angle and this angle are a linear pair. So if I do 180 minus 124, I would get that this angle here is 56 degrees. Which means that this part of angle one is 56 degrees as well. Looking at these two parallel lines, the one that I drew in and the bottom one, by this transversal, this 61 degree angle and this part of angle one are corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are congruent when we have parallel lines. So that part of angle one is 61 degrees. So if I want to find angle one, now I just add the two together. 56 plus 61 gives us that the measure of angle one is 117 degrees. I use two different reasonings. I used the linear pair theorem and I used corresponding angles postulated. All right, moving on to the next one. I'm going to draw an auxiliary line in so it's parallel to the other two parallel lines, but it's not necessarily cutting angle G in half. Looking at that parallel line, with this parallel line and this transversal, this 144 degree angle and this part of angle G are same side interior angles, so they're supplementary. 180 minus 144 gives us that this angle here, or this part of angle G, is 36 degrees. Looking at these two parallel lines, Cut by this transversal, this 56 degree angle and the other part of angle G are alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles are congruent, so that is 56 degrees. Adding 36 and 56 degrees together, I get the measure of angle G is 92 degrees, and I use two different types of reasoning. That was same side interior angles theorem and I used the alternate interior angles theorem. I'm going to have you pause the video and try the next one on your own. Little hint, we want to draw an auxiliary line through, oops that was a bad one, through here. That's parallel to the other two lines. All right, so you get R is 46 degrees using the same side interior angles theorem with these two, then doing 96 minus 50 to get this one, and then using alternate interior angles to get that. I'm going to get you started with number nine. This 120 degree angle along with this angle here are corresponding angles, so we can set them equal to one another. I have two variables in this equation, so I need to create another equation to do systems of equations. This angle here and this angle here are corresponding angles, so this is 125. And this angle here and this angle here are alternate exterior angles, and alternate exterior angles are congruent. So this, these two can be set equal to one another. I'm going to have you solve this system. 
And here's your answer.